because we want to do one thing, we want to win. How many of you want to win? Like it's one thing to hope your team wins later today. It's another thing to win in life. That's an entirely different story. And I think we're here this morning because we want to win. But understand, the way to win is we have to live life you God's know, way. Yeah, they're, they're going to attack us this morning. You guys can turn it off. There you go. Thank you. Don't you love it? You never know what to expect. And you thought today was going to be an ordinary day. I love it. But you see, if you're going to win a home run life, you have to live life God's way. We talked about last week how God actually has a game plan for life. And when you live life God's way, you follow the plan that he has for you and for me. We can live a home run life. And we found God's pattern, God's game plan in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We're going to see this on the screen this morning. But the Apostle Paul writes these words. He talks about a pattern, a way to live our life. Do you have those slides, guys? We're struggling. All right, let me grab it. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Here's what Paul says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, Notice what he says. This is your spiritual act of worship. And then he says this, verse 2, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So Paul says there's a pattern. There's a game plan for life. If you want to win, you have to live God's way. And we talk about how... In the game of baseball, we're using this as an analogy to help us understand life and the way God's called us to live it. Everything begins and ends at home plate. And we said last week that when it comes to your life and my life, life does not start with us. 
It starts with God and how God wants us to connect with Him. And something amazing happens when you connect with God, you can discover your purpose for life. You can understand why you're here and how God's wired you and how you can best follow Him and serve Him. Isn't that good? But then not only can you discover your purpose, God gives you power to live the kind of life that you cannot live on your own. See, you're here this morning, a lot of you, because you tried to live life on your own and you found something out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But when you connect with God, you find purpose and power for life. So everything starts at home plate. But then you have to leave home plate and you go where? First base. First base is about character. How God wants us to win within. See, the problem in life is a lot of people crash and burn because of one thing. It's their character. God wants you to win. And so he's going to not necessarily change the things around you. He's going to change the things that are going on in your life. How many of you know that's often better? Mm -hmm. And so God wants to change your life. He wants to help you to win within. And then you leave first base and you go to second base. Second base is about community. How God wants us to be able to win with others. And how we need to learn how to build relationships with people. We all want that. But a lot of people struggle. How do you do that? How can I have a better marriage? How can I interact with my kids better? How can I get along with my coworkers a lot better or my neighbors? We want relationships, we value them, but we often don't know how to go about it. How many of you know God has a game plan for that? And so we can win in our relationships. But then you round second base and you come to third base and third base is the performance base. It's about competence. We all want to win results. We all want to see things happen in our life. How many of you want to be successful? Raise your hand. Don't lie in church. <laughs> you want to be successful. There's nothing wrong with that. And so God's given us a way that we can live a kind of life that's successful and we can find significance in life. And that's the performance base. And so God has a game plan for life. He has a pattern. But just as we talk about God's pattern, how many of you know that the world also has a pattern? The world has a way that they live their life and they go about their business. And you know how the world runs the bases? They run the bases backwards. The world starts with performance. And hear me this morning, when your life is all about performance, you end up cheating all the other bases. See, if all you care about is doing more and achieving more, you're going to shortcut all the time and effort it takes to build a healthy marriage and have a good relationship with your kids. You're going to shortcut your relationships. You're going to cheat them. If all you care about is performance, you're going to cheat your character. And you're going to find yourself in situations where you can compromise and you can, you can make excuses for, for, you know what, I'm going to cut corners here and nobody will know it because all that matters is that I get ahead. You shortcut your character. And you get thrown out. And you strike out. And, and, and you don't know why. When, you, when all you care about is performance, you shortcut and you cheat your time with God. The very one that can help you live a great life. And the one that can help you live a home run life. You cheat your time with Him. And you disconnect. And then you wonder why life is frustrating and, and, and your plans aren't always going the way you want them to. Because you see, there's a pattern for living our life. And that's what we're talking about this morning. And so the real question this morning is this. It's a simple one, but I think it's a question that we're all trying to figure out. How do you get on base? I mean, if the goal is to cross home plate, you've got to get to all the bases. Did you ever think about that? How do you get on base? Because you know in the game of baseball, did you know that three quarters of the players get thrown out on their way to first base? Mm -hmm. That's a big percentage, isn't it? Most people, most players, they don't even make it to first base. And so how do you get on base? How do you live this life God has called you to live? Well, I'm so thankful for Jesus. Because he helps us to understand this, this principle of how to get on base. And it's John 15, 5. Jesus talks about this in John 15, 5. We got, we got the scripture? Familiar scripture. He says this, I'm the vine and you are the branches. 
And he goes on to say this, those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. And here's the key. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from God, you can't live the kind of life he wants you to live. Now understand what Jesus is talking about there in John 15. He, he's really painting this amazing picture. And, and it's a picture of the kind of life he wants us to live. But he uses agriculture. And he says there's a flow to life. Did you realize that there's a flow to life? Did you realize that's one of the reasons Jesus says there's a season for everything? There's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a plant, time to plant, there's time to harvest, because there's a season. There's a flow of life. But not only is there a flow of life, I think more importantly what Jesus is saying is that there's a flow of power that is available to you and me. You see, in order for a branch to bear fruit... Now, I know a lot of, uh, you know, we're getting ready to, to be in the fall weather and all this kind of stuff. And so the harvest is, is really picking up right now, isn't it? People are starting to gather their plums and their apples and all those kind of things. How does the apple grow and develop? How does that tree become fruitful? It has to be connected to the vine. It has to be connected to the roots. And so when that branch is connected to the vine... There's a flow of power that flows from the vine into the branch so that the branch can be fruitful. So what does that have to do with you and me? What is Jesus talking about in John 15? Well, he's telling us our purpose and why we are here. He's saying you're created to know God. That's what he's saying. You're created to have this relationship with God. In other words, God is the vine. And we're connect, created to connect with Him. Are you hearing me? To know Him. To have this relationship with God. Because Jesus wants us to understand something. When you tap into God's power, you have the power to change. That is good. I thought I was talking to a Pentecostal church this morning. I really did. Because you can't change on yourself, by yourself. You can't change yourself. You tried. You've gone to Barnes and Noble and got those books. You know what I'm talking about. You've looked on the internet. You've tried all these different dieting strategies and all these other kind of things. And you've discovered that you cannot change yourself. Jesus wants us to know that. And hear me, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because what he's saying is that when you connect to God, you have access to power that can change your life. Amen. You have that access to the power of God that will help you to live a home run life. Now here's the opposite side of that though. Are you ready for this? When you disconnect from God... You go back to your old ways. When you disconnect from God, you go back to your old self. We've all done that, right? All of us have done that. And so when you disconnect from God, hear me, you go back to your old passions. You go back to your old desires. Some of you, you go back to your old habits and your old way of thinking. Some of us, we go back to our fear that have always tried to cripple us and hold us back. Ultimately, we go back to our sinful ways. And you know what happens to us? Sin disconnects us from God. Sin causes us to strike out. And, 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 and so God says, you know what? Because I care about you, I want you to win. I want you to win. So how do you win? How do you get on base? How do you connect with God? I'm going to give you a couple thoughts this morning. You ready? Real quickly. One is this. You have to live for the truth. You have to live for the truth. You want to connect with God and know Him? You have to live for the truth. Because let me tell you something you already know, but you may not have realized it or thought about it much. Are you ready for this? We all base our lives on truth and lies. All of us do. We base our life on what is true and what is not true. 
Every single one of us does that. So here's the real question. If you want to live a home run life, you have to know what's true. You got to know what's true. How, how, how do you do that? Well, we're going to talk about that more in a minute, but, but to let you kind of know where we're going, I read this story and, and it just, it made me crack up. It was about this little four year old boy who just loved baseball. And I think he was a Cincinnati Reds fan. He just loved baseball. And every time he could, he was out in the front yard with his dad just playing. And what was funny about this little four-year-old is that no matter what he hit, it was always a home run. He'd hit the ball, and he'd run around the imaginary bases, and he'd come home, and he'd slide headfirst into home plate. He'd say, home run, Daddy, home run. And so his dad thought to himself, you know what, he's getting a little bit older. So as his father, I think I need to start teaching him that if you that not everything you hit is a home run. I, I think I need to start teaching him that if you overrun the bases and somebody tags you, you're called out. And so he's talking to his little four-year-old boy about the bases and about the concept of baseball. And you know, if you get tagged, you're out. And he thought his little boy was getting it. And so he, he pitched the ball to him one more time. And he said, remember, before I throw this, if you overrun the base and I tag you, you're out. His little boy's like, okay, daddy, play ball. So his dad throws him the ball. And he hits it towards the shortstop area. His dad scoops it up. And he tells his son, now I've got the ball. I've got the ball. If you overrun second base, I'm going to tag you. And his little boy kept running. And he overran second base, and on his way to third, his dad tagged him. But the boy kept running. And he ran all the way home, slid into home plate, dusted himself off, and said, Home run, Daddy! Home run! And his dad looked at him and said, No home run, Daddy. No home run. You're out. You're out. I told you. I tagged you, and you're out. And the little boy sat down, folded his chubby little arms, and he looked at his dad and said, My bat, my ball, if you don't play by my rules, I'm going home. <laughs> and, and I love that story, don't you? It's funny. But here's what's not so funny about that story, though. You and I are that little four-year-old boy. Because, you see, God has given us a way to live life. And when we don't like what God has to say, we get angry. We get upset. It's almost like we look at God and say, you know what? Because you didn't want to do it my way, I'm leaving and I'm going home. You see, if you want to connect with God, you have to live for the truth. You've got to live for the truth. Now here's what's so cool about God's word. Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Look at these scriptures. They are powerful. Here's what it says. All scripture. Everybody say all. All. All scripture. So that means Genesis through Revelation. Everything written in God's Word is from God, and it's God-breathed. And it says, it is useful. Oh, this is good. It is useful for what? Teaching. You know why? Because let's be honest, we don't often know what's best for our life. We think we do. We think we've got life figured out, but none of us do. And so we all need to be taught. We all need to be teachable. And so guess what? God's Word can teach us how to live a home run life and how to connect with God. It goes on to say this, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. For training in righteousness. Now let me share the, 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 a different version with you because I like how it says it. New Living Translation says this, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. Get that in you. And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us how to do what is right. 
So you know what God's word is saying there? Don't miss this. There is truth and there is error. There is right and there is wrong. There is a way to live life that pleases God and that enables you to be in his presence and ultimately to live a home run life. And there's a way to live life that will cause you to strike out and be separated from him for eternity. And guess what? I didn't make the rules up. I didn't make that up. It was God. You know why he gave us what is right and what is wrong? It's not because he wants your life to be boring. And it's not because he wants you to feel like you have to do all these rules and follow all these regulations. It's not that God's trying to take the fun out of life. You know what God's trying to do for you and for me? He wants us to win. That is his heart. He wants you to win. He wants you to live a home run life. And because he cares about you so much, he says there is truth and there is error. You choose. You choose. You choose. But they don't all end up in the same place. So live for the truth. And you know what the second thing is? You have to plug into the vine. Plug into the vine. Now if Jesus were using this parable today when he talked about the vine and the branches, understand who he was talking to. He was talking to people who made a living off of farming and agriculture. And so when he began to talk about the vine and the branches, I could just see them now, their eyes perked up, and they're like, oh yeah, this is good stuff. I get it. I understand it. But you know what? We live in 2015. Most of us aren't making a living through agriculture. And so sometimes when we read scripture, it, it kind of goes over our head and we don't really get the true meaning or understanding of what it's about. And so what's kind of funny is I think if Jesus were here today and he were teaching us about the vine and the branches, I think he would say it differently. And I think he would say it this way. I think Jesus would say, I'm the power outlet, and you're the cord. If you plug into me, you will have light. Apart from me, you will live in the dark. I think that's what Jesus would say. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, I think we would say, you know what, there are times when we feel just like that. When we feel like we're walking in the dark where we don't have any direction and any purpose and we don't know where we're headed in life. And maybe Jesus is saying it's because you've disconnected. Plug back into me. I'll give you light. I'll give you guidance. And I'll give you power to live a life that you can't live on your own. So plug into the vine. Because here's what you've got to understand about God. His heart is to take you places that only he can take you. Did you know you can only take yourself so far? Did you know you can only lead your family so far and your kids so far? Can I at least get one amen? Amen. Yeah. And so God wants to take you places that only he can take you. And I was reminded of this a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, Lila's kind of getting at this age where she'll see commercials to movies and sometimes she's like, oh, I want to go see that movie. And so the movie that she wanted to see was Inside Out. She wanted to go see that movie. But here was the problem. She's five years old. She can't drive. She doesn't have a driver's license. Now, as parents, we're also kind of at that age where we're like, we're not going to let other people take her. So you know what? We had to make a decision. If Lila's going to get to this movie then me as her daddy, I have to take her there. Otherwise, she'll never see it. And she'll never experience it. And we went, and it was funny. It, it, it was pretty good. But that's the idea of God. He wants to take you places in your life that you can't take yourself. And, and he's given you an invitation. Because here's what you have to realize about God. He is not wrestling with the things that you are wrestling with. The things that you're wrestling with, 
Those issues you have, the, those struggles you have, those temptations you have to walk back into your old life and your old ways, God's not struggling with that stuff. And so what he's saying is this, if you will let me, I will work in your life. And I will help you overcome those things in your life that only I can help you with. But you have to plug into the vine. Plug into the vine. All right, at this time, everybody up out of your seats. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Stretch out those bones. Stretch out those muscles. And join us in singing, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. do a seventh inning stretch, but we're talking about connecting with God. So you got to live for the truth. you got to plug in the divine. And the last thing I, I, I want to give to you this morning, how you can win a home run life, how you can connect with God. And I pray if you didn't hear anything else, you'll hear this. You have to draw the line. Now I should clarify that though. You see, we do not draw the line. God does. God's the one who decides the boundaries. Do you know that? God's the one who decides what is right and what is wrong, what is truth and what is error. God draws the line. And the reason He draws the line, again, is because He wants you to win. He wants you to win. And you may not feel like it this morning, but He's your biggest fan. He, he's rooting for you. He's cheering you on. But if you're going to draw the line then here's what each and every one of us have to make a decision to do. We have to agree with God. We have to say, Lord, well, if you've, if you've drawn this line, then I have to agree with that. I have to accept that. I have to know that you must be doing that because you're, you're protecting me from myself or because you have a better plan for my life. But God, I agree with you. Because again, here's what happens. God is the one who draws the ground rules. We have to follow them. You see, as I was thinking about this, you know, in every Major League Baseball, there's a fair pole, there's a foul pole, there are boundaries. Did you know that the players don't just go out on the field and decide where those lines are? Did you know that those lines are already predetermined? This is what is fair and this is what is foul. These are the ground rules, and you have to accept it. You have to agree with it. Did you know God's done that with us? He's laid the ground rules, guys. And in case you're wondering what some of those ground rules are in Romans, I want you to look at these scriptures here this morning, and we're going to pray. Here's what Paul writes, Romans chapter 6. Well then, should we keep on sinning? So that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Should we just live life the way we're doing it? Knowing God's got something better for us? Should we just do that? And he says, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? 
How can we keep saying, God, I'm erasing this line and I'm going to draw it right here and think that we're going to live a home run life? Paul goes on to say, or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? Here are the boundaries. Here's the way to live. Next verse. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, here it is, by his glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. That's the good news. That's the truth. That's the truth. Now notice what he goes on to say. Next verse, guys. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Ooh, we're preaching this morning. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. You don't get to decide where the ground rules are. You don't get to decide where the line is drawn. That's already established. Don't you realize? Don't you realize? Don't you realize that you become the slave to whatever you choose to obey? Ooh. You can be a slave to sin and you can strike out. It leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. That's a home run life right there. But guess what? You choose it. You choose. Yes, God, I want to live a home run life. And if that's your prayer, then God says, I've drawn the line. Now, can I just talk about society just for a second? Because if I was a pastor and I didn't say something, I'd be wrong to say it. We live in a culture today that is trying its best to erase the line. We're living in a culture today that wants you to believe that God's word is outdated, that it doesn't apply to your life today, and that somehow, miraculously, we are so much smarter than what God had to say to us back when scripture was written. And we wonder today why families are falling apart. We wonder today why our society is a mess. We wonder today why people don't know who they are. Are you listening to me? And it's because we have said, God, we're not going to follow your ground rules. We're going to erase the line and we are going to live life our way. You can do that. Absolutely. That's a choice. But scripture clearly says, you'll strike out. You'll strike out. Because you know something? As much as our culture tries to preach and teach discipline, did you know that discipline can only take you so far? Do you know you need something more than discipline if you want your life to change and if you want to be different? And God said, you know what? I'll give it to you. It's my power. With God's power in your life, you can live different. You don't have to live in your old ways. You don't have to let your, your, your desires control you and rule you. God says that with his power in your life, that sin no longer has to own you. That it no longer has to have power over your life. But we're about to get real this morning. Because I'm talking to human beings, and I'm talking to myself. We all struggle with sin. Every single one of us does. We are not a perfect church by any stretch of the imagination. And it's because God has set a standard, God has established His ground rules, and each and every one of us has a desire to do our own thing. Every one of us does. And there are things in your life this morning, you have been struggling with them since you have been a teenager. 
and you feel like you're getting ahead, you feel like you're making some progress, and then it keeps popping back up, and it keeps popping back up, and it keeps tripping you. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a temper. That's what God had to deal with me this week. You can ask my wife. I tell you all the time, before I ever preach a message, I preach to myself. And God was saying, you know what, Mike? You think you're a pastor, Mike? Well, let me talk to you like Pastor Mike. You've got an attitude and you've got a temper. And that's not for me. And I need to break that in your life. Will you let me? I've drawn the line. Will you accept it? Will you agree with it? And will you surrender to me? Can I tell you this week, Lisa and I, we were praying in my office about that very same thing. Because I struggle with things just as much as you do. But here's the good news of the gospel. It does not have to rule your life. It doesn't have to rule your life. So every head bowed this morning and every eye closed. We're going to take a few minutes today to respond to God's word. To respond to the Holy Spirit. Because yes, we, we came and we had fun. And some of you received some prizes and cool things. And that's all good. That's all dandy. We wanted to do that. Church should be fun. But at the same time, I, I want to tell you, you don't have to leave the same way you came in. Those things you're battling with, those struggle, it's, maybe it's a temper. Maybe some of you, you just lie all the time and you can't help it and you're, you're trying to break that. And God's saying, let me do that. Let me help you. For others of you, it, 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 it could be lust. You're lusting after things. Maybe it's somebody of the opposite sex. Maybe it's just more power. you got to get that promotion in your job. Maybe it's more money. I don't know what it is, but, but you're chasing after all these things and you still feel empty. And you feel disconnected and you feel like you can't live a life that God's called you to live. That's the lie of the enemy. Because God says you can overcome. He can break that cycle of sin in your life. Those things that are continually holding you back. But here it is, guys. We have to swallow our pride. We have to say, Lord, you know what? I try to hide myself from... You know, I try to hide my real self from people, but I can't hide from you. You know me. You know me. Even now, I believe it with all my heart. God is speaking to your heart. And those thoughts that are popping up in your mind, you didn't come up with that on your own. That's God. And He's speaking to you. And He's letting you know, yes, there's an issue. There's something in your life. But it doesn't have to stay there. I can break that in your life. Will you let me? Will you let me? And so I'm going to pray this morning. Worship team is, is just going to continue to sing. And I'm just going to simply invite you. If you need God to do a new work in your life. If you need something in your life to be broken. If you want to leave here different than the way that you came in. I'm going to ask you to come to the front this morning. This is an altar. And it's just symbolic of saying, God, I'm sacrificing myself to you. It's no longer me that's going to live. I'm going to let you live in my life. I'm going to agree with what you have to say. And I'm going to ask you to change me. People are coming already. That's the Spirit of God. Can you give them a hand clap?